Okay, so for the two queries we're going to make, the criteria is changing a little bit um, for this number 10. Uh, I had a look and the criteria didn't make 100% sense, so the Department of Education, I contacted them and they will bring, they will send out a memo with the changes that will be implemented. So, um, we need to create two relevant queries that are correct, meaningful, and will actually inform or support the problem. And it actually demonstrates understanding. All right. So this is the complexity criteria and how creative or how meaningful you actually apply the criteria is what will earn this mark for you. Okay. So let's go have a look. Um, what I suggest you do is when you create the queries, you're going to create them here and whatever you name them, the name itself has to be meaningful enough that one can actually gather from the name what your intention was. And you need to work with this data as if you had like a thousand people's answers and then think of what would be an interesting question to ask and the data that you could gather from asking a, or, you know, running a query on that. So I'm not going to show you on this data. I'm going to show you examples on um, another database. <clears throat> so basically we have three levels of complexity um, and we need to have two queries. So I usually just make two queries then um, and level one, I will actually in uh, this number three I'll incorporate in number one or two or both okay so level one complexity is simple criteria just a straightforward extracting something like let's have a look here um, if I look at this this is uh, the metric database from a year or two ago so um, basically just this is a lot of paintings and who painted it if I just extract all the paintings with a excellent rating that would be a level one criteria because it's just a straightforward rating or I'd say something um, all the paintings that um, is painted after the year 1900 straightforward simple criteria that would be a level one so let's do that for an example so I'm going to create a query wizard and I'm going to insert the fields I need. Now here it depends on you on which fields you want to add. In this instance I'm going to put in the painting and the artist, the year it was painted and the rating. Okay next and then the name will be uh, paintings after 1900. You see, so the name has to be, has to actually lead you to know what you're going to see when you open up this query. All right, so to actually extract the correct data, I have to then enter the criteria in the design view. And that will look like this, greater than 1900. And there I have a few records. Okay, so that's a simple level one. If I were to change this, then I would change the name. I would say paintings with excellent rating. Then I would actually change it and just say excellent over here. And then it would extract that. You'll see it actually put in the quotation marks by itself. Okay, so that is an example of a simple criteria or a level one um, query with simple criteria. All right, then the second one, let's have a look. <clears throat> one field with combined criteria using conditions and relational operators, for example, X or Y or ranges like larger than one and less than 10. OK, or a field with a criteria using wild cards. All right. Now, if you remember in the Excel, we used wildcards when we had a count if, if I look at this, okay, if I want to get everyone who said Instagram, including this one, where it says Facebook and Instagram, then I actually need to use wildcards to extract that. So I'm going to give you an example here. 
Um, some of these painting names include the word party, more than one. So, to extract the paintings that contain the word party, I will go ahead like this. I'll put in the painting name and the artist. And I will say uh, party paintings. And then this is what the criteria looks like. I just type in star party star. And then basically what that does is it looks for, and you'll see when I click away, it puts the like and the quotation marks in by itself. Just leave that there. It's supposed to look like that. Um, basically what that does is the star means that word party can be anywhere in the title of the painting. So there. There are two paintings with the word party in the name. Okay, so that would be a level two query. Uh, let's do another example. They said arrange uh, or more than one. So I could probably say all the ratings with uh, good and excellent. Or then it would be good or excellent, or I could say a uh, patent in the years between 1900 and 1910, for example. So let's say create query wizard and the painting, the year that it was painted. Let's just do that and say paintings. Okay, so everyone knows what's going to be there if they open this. Okay, then I go to the design view and then the criteria will look like this. Greater than or equal to 1900 and less than or equal to 1910. Then both those numbers are actually included. Okay, let's see the result. Wonderful. Now, if I want to um, get my last mark, I actually need to sort something as well. So here I can decide what I want to sort. I think I'll probably sort the painting name. So then I'll apply sorting as well. There you go. All right. So that's one example. And then the last example would be, let's say, for the rating. I can say... Paintings with a good or excellent uh, ratings. Okay. And then I would actually have to, it would actually have to look like that. Good or excellent. You see when I click away, it actually puts the words good and excellent in quotation marks and or stays in the middle because this is now an operator okay there you go and it's taken out average and then the same there has to be some kind of sorting so then I would probably sort paintings all right so those are examples for you of how you would actually use this criteria to get your marks